Goodfellas is a box office hit about the mob. It's a movie based on fact. Entertainment reporter Steve Kameko joins us now from Hollywood with the behind-the-scenes story. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Paula. The movie Goodfellas, uh, as well as the book it was based on, Wise Guy, consists of the recollections of a small-time mobster by the name of Henry Hill. Hill eventually testified against his former cronies, then went into hiding. Well, we managed to find Hill, and with makeup altering his appearance, we spoke with him. There wasn't anything I couldn't get that I wanted. And I uh, used to walk around with a grand or two in your pocket at all. Henry Hill today, recalling what he considered the glamorous lifestyle of a Brooklyn hood. His lifestyle, as depicted in the film Goodfellas. Ray Liotta plays Hill. He gave him $20 each. All right. Henry, this is what Mr. Tony over there. Where? Over there. Oh, thanks so much, Tony. Thank you. Salute. Ah. What do you do? What? What do you do? I'm in construction. I do miss certain aspects of that life. Uh, I mean, I'd be a liar if I, you know, if I told you I didn't. I mean, it's an, it's an intoxicating lifestyle. There was no role models in my neighborhood other than these people. And, uh, f you know, at, at that time, I felt fortunate to be able to be a part of them. You know, and I wanted to be a part of them. That was my ambition as a, as a kid. Wow, if I could be one of them, I can get out of this neighborhood. Hi, Mom. What do you think? You look like a gangster. Henry Hill was just 11 years old when he got his first after-school job at the local mob hangout. He hung on to the job for a quarter of a century, becoming involved in every aspect of gang activity. Yeah, hustle constantly. You know, we worked continuously from one score to another score to another score. People told me all my life, my family, my in-laws, had I funneled my energy that I put into that life, not only myself but all the other people, that we could be successful in any business we attempted to go into. But you didn't get the uh, so-called respect, which wasn't respect. It was people were afraid of you. They didn't respect you. They feared you. <laughs> and uh, a lot of things I did, I, you know, I couldn't say no to a lot of things. Because if I, if I said no, either I got chased or I was, uh, I was whacked. I mean, once you're a part of it, you're a part of it. There is, there is no way out. The only way out is, a, is in a box. You can't resign. But Hill did get out. Fearing he was about to be killed, he broke two rules that were hammered into his head since he was a kid working the streets. Never ran on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. How important was that to me? It was very important in that, in, in that life. Very important. And in, and, uh, but when it came down to it, when it came down to my family's life and my life, we, were, we had to come first. After testifying against his former partners in crime, Hill went into hiding. And that's where he's been the past 10 years, leading a new life while fearing the old one may yet exact its revenge. I constantly look over my shoulder. I constantly look in the rearview mirror. I, uh, my main defense is to stay away from slippery places, from places where I think that those type of people would be hanging out. There's always a bookmaker. There's always a, uh, you know, uh, somebody... Uh, a, uh, a loan shark around. Uh, you you avoid those those pap those places and those people. And uh, you know I've been able to survive. You know, like I said earlier, it hasn't been easy. And uh, you know, but I'm I'm grateful. I'm, I'm I'm very grateful today to even be alive. Henry Hill now lives his life in his words as an average nobody. He's a recovering drug addict, and more than one arrest for drug-related crimes have forced him out of the Federal Witness Protection Program, but he says the FBI still watches over him, and right now he's attempting to sell another book about the second part of his life in hiding. Paula? All right, thanks, Steve. 20 minutes before the hour right now, Harry? This morning, the subject is Martin Scorsese's new movie about the mafia, Goodfellas, starring Robert De Niro. So, is it uh, a movie you can't refuse? Uh, no, you, you can't, and you know, just even your phraseology from the good fe uh, Godfather, on Goodfellas, uh, this is a picture that stands uh, in criticism, if you will, of the godfather of the romancing, romancing of the uh, mob. The, uh, we always think that these mobsters, you know, they're awful, but they're so honorable with each other, or they only just kill their own. Uh, this picture puts lie to all of that. It is a film that has a real hard moral stance, and it comes across the, these times. Uh, as really refreshing how hard it comes down on the mob. Uh, it starts out with some of the romance as we see a young mobster uh, played by Ray Liotta uh, take center stage at a nightclub and impress his girlfriend. Here's the romance of being a mobster with some clout.
Nice jab at the crooked unions there, and this picture does come in with some hard reality and practical facts constantly. And then the picture, very quickly, very early in the film, not, not late in the picture, not at the end, not as an afterthought, but very early on, we see the hard side of these guys, the animalistic side. In fact, the animalistic totality, not just a side, and that's in the character played by Joe Pesci, a mobster who just strikes out with violence frankly because he's an animal and doesn't know how to behave any other way and here he's being pestered by a nightclub owner to pay his bill and this is the way Pesci reacts this guy's worried about he didn't want to come over and give the check you know this is the way he could take care of this shit yeah it's no problem don't put it on my tab of course that's what I want to talk to you about you know it ain't just this here it's seven big ones here seven G's you owe me here seven thousand dollars I mean eight peanuts I don't mean to be out of order, or nothing. You don't mean to be out of order. <laughs> Jeez, it's good you don't mean to be out of order, Sonny. You call embarrassing me in front of my friends, don't know, like calling me a deadbeat. You know, I you know, Sonny, you're a real mutt. You Come know on. the money we what spend on this. Come on, don't be like that. What do you mean, don't be like that? Oh, freak! You think this is funny, huh? He's having. <laughs> What are you looking at? You know, when it goes silent in this picture and one of these uh, mobsters uh, glares at somebody, it is frightening. The silence itself is frightening before the violent act. And Pesci gets much tougher than that, shooting a guy who uh, simply makes an insult, a verbal insult toward him. Uh, Martin Scorsese is getting all kinds of praise for directing this picture, and he deserves every credit. But one person who's uh, really an unsung hero of all of this is Nick Pileggi, who interviewed this Henry Hill, this real-life mobster played by Ray Liotta, who turned informant. Uh, there are things in Pileggi's book, Wise Guy, that are dead-lifted right by Scorsese, right from the start, about uh, little things where you notice pinky rings and how when a mobster gets out of the car, this little boy uh, that was the Henry Hill character, notice how the car lifts up, and all these things that are cinematic are right in the very first pages of the book Wise Guy. So it is Martin Scorsese's film to be sure, but all the ideas in this picture are truly Nick Pileggi's as well, and he deserves credit. Thank you, Gene. Pleasure. Thanks, Gene. We'll be right back. The name Ray Liotta may not be instantly recognizable, but you might know him as Melanie Griffith's crazed husband in Something Wild, or as shoeless Joe Jackson in last year's baseball hit, Field of Dreams. Now Liotta plays a mobster turned government informant in Goodfellas with Robert De Niro. What, 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 what? What happened with Stax? Is everything okay? Yeah, don't worry about that. It's all right. Jimmy, there's feds all over the place. It's so what? Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? It's, uh, it's the world. papers? What are, you, what are you worried about? No, this is uh, the television, the newspapers. What, what are you worried about? You worry too much. It, everything is beautiful. There's nothing to worry about. Then you tell them. What was it like working with the Nero? Oh, it was great. It was great. I mean, what you realize, you know, you see a, a human being, an actor who has to hit his mark and say his lines just like everybody else. It just so happens he does it very deep and very full. But, you know, in college, when I first started getting into this, you know, he was someone that I always looked up to, so it was great. Were you intimidated at all? No. No, I was just more excited. I was really excited to work with them. What was it like, though, on this set? I mean, the first day, and you go up to meet Robert De Niro, at least a little bit of a butterfly? Uh, or no, a... yeah, at rehearsal, uh, you know, my palms are sweating a little, but luckily I was just so focused on the story that I, I didn't think about nerves or anything else. I mean, even, you know, as far back as rehearsals, you know, I I'd, I'd lived with this for three months and I just really, I knew it was a, you know, great opportunity. So I was just working my tail off all the time just to stay focused on that. Henry, the, the, the guy you play is in a witness protection program. Mm -hmm. You finally talked to him after the movie was mm -hmm. made. And what did he say about how you portrayed him? Um, he really liked the movie. He was very, very nervous, he told me, um, going into it. Um, 
seeing that he was going to come out as the rat, which he is, he was, he did. And, and I think for some reason that's the only thing that stayed in his mind. Um, but he really liked it and he was, he was impressed that, that we got all the details down without uh, ever having met him, um, which was nice. Uh, I, all around in every area of the movie, so I think it was it was it was a big release for him to to see his. It must be a trip, mm. and then to you know because the, there you, he could probably maybe somewhat more objective about it, seeing how somebody else looked at it, and that's that was just an intense life that he lived. You started doing acting at uh, University of Miami, mm -hmm. did some soaps for a while, mm -hmm. went out to L.A., sort of disappeared off of the face of the earth, yeah. and have been becoming more and more visible over time are you are you where you want to be uh yeah yeah i you know i just really like acting and i take class with this guy harry Mastro george in la and so because i like the acting and just have fun with that i've been able you know in the periods where nothing was happening i was at least able to to still do what i like and the reason what i'm in here for is you know to play make-believe it's fun um but yeah yeah i yeah. am sitting here with you like this but the word star and all that goes with that. Are you hungry for that at all, or would you just as soon not even get close to that? No, I think if I was hungry for it, I would have capitalized after the first, after something wild. I think, I, you know, there was a lot of opportunities, but I didn't want to get stuck in a certain thing. So, I, you know, I've been taking my time. But no, I'm not. I just really like the acting, and sometimes you could take this stuff a little too serious, and there's people who do, and, you know, it's a game. Congratulations. Oh, well, thanks. You're great in this movie. Thanks. People are going to be telling you that a lot in the I next so. couple of months. I hope so. <laughs>